Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be going over the uh, if conditional statement as well as the for loop and the while loop. So these are three statements are normally used to make decisions within your, your Python code. So I'll start with the uh, if statement, which is you can use to make a decision uh, within your code. So I already have an example here in VS code. So I'll, I'll just explain briefly what the code is doing. So the first line here, I have uh, the import statement. I'm importing the daytime module and then I'm assigning it the DT name here, which is going to be easier to, to type. And then here I have a, a, a variable called this second and I'm assigning it to this line here. So basically what this line is doing is it's getting the current uh, date and time. So here you have DT, which is this one here that we imported. And then this is the sub module of the daytime. And then this is um, a function within the DT sub module. And then this is an attribute within daytime. So once you calculate this portion right here, you'll get a time and uh, today's time and then the current date. And then you can pull just the seconds using the dot notation here. So this line here, all it's doing is it's just printing the today's date and time which is the same as this. And then this one is printing this one right here, the second, the current second. Okay, now we'll come to the, the main portion of today's tutorial, which is the if statement right here. So it's saying that if this second that we are getting right now, if we divide it by two, this one is uh, calculating the remainder. When we, when we divide by two, the remainder, if the remainder is zero, then we know it's, it's going to be an even number. So we'll print, we'll print here, there's a statement. As you can see, it's indented. So this is part of this block. So here we have uh, the statement says print. This second is an even number. And else, which is otherwise, if this statement is not true, if it's not zero, when we div the remainder is not zero, when we divide it, we divide by two, then we'll, we know it's an odd number. So we print, thus we have an else statement, which will give us the print. Uh, a new block to print this second is an odd number because it's not an even number. And then you can print, and this one is just going to be uh, printed no matter what happens in these two blocks. So pretty much that's how you use the um, the if statement. It just checks the condition if it's true or not. If it's true, you, you do some f stuff here in your block that's indented. If it's not true, you can have an else statement which will do whatever it's indented in that block. This one suggests comments here. So if we run this code here, you'll see the results. So it should give us the time now, the time and date, which is right here, today's date, then the time. Then it's just gonna pull the second here and print this second 27. And then it's gonna do, since it's not, 27 is not divisible. When you divide it by two, it doesn't give us a zero as a remainder. It's odd. And then it's gonna do this. We can try to run the code again, see if we'll get a, an even number. So now when we run it, we're getting a 44 seconds, which is even. That's why this becomes true and it prints that. Another way you can use the if uh, the if condition is when you have multiple conditions that you might want to check. So if you, you the conditions are not just two, if let's say you have three or four conditions, there's another statement you can use, which is the else if or l if, which allows you to test more than two or three conditions in your code. So I'll use another example here. I'll go ahead and delete this one. And this example will involve uh, randoms. So the random modules are import random. Then I'll create a list here. So this list is just going to contain the, the different possible weather conditions. So cold, uh, let's say sunny, and then maybe it's rainy. And then we we'll say current uh, weather. We now we'll use the random module and then choice function. So this is a, it's gonna allow us to pick a random weather condition from the list here. 
So I'm giving the weather here. He's, he's going to pick randomly either cold, sunny, or rainy. And then we'll print whatever it gives us the current weather. And then now I'll use the if statement and say if current weather, and we'll use the comparison statement. If it's cold, we'll do something. So we'll say print uh, where code. Now, since we have, we'll be having more than two conditions, we'll use, instead of else, we'll use elif, short for else if. Then here we'll say elif, uh, let's say the current weather equals sunny. We'll say print, should be the comparison statement here. Do not wear a coat. And then we'll do daily current rainy. We say print, say bring your umbrella. And so when you're using the elif statements, you don't. You know, it's not a must to use the else statement like we used in the previous example. So you can just run the code the way it is. We'll go ahead and run the code and see. So it's going to check, it's going to run this right here, this line. The random choice is going to pick and see what whether it is based on our list here. So it picked rainy and then it says, so this is the one that's true. It says bring your umbrella. So we we'll run it again. Okay, this time it picked cold weather and then it just says we are cold because this, this condition here became true and then it did whatever that's in, indented under if. Okay, so that's the second way of using the if statement. Next, we'll go to the for loop. So the for loop is is used to loop through. Uh, you can loop through like a, a list, or you can loop through like a, any sequence. We'll go over three examples of the different uh, variations. So we'll delete this here. So the first one will be just a simple for i. In uh, we'll we'll start with the list here. So that's our sequence. We we'll say for i in which refers to either one, three, five, or seven, print i. So what this does is just gonna look the first time around in the first loop, it's just gonna look here as assign one to i and print a, a one, and then the second loop is gonna assign three to i, then five to i, and seven to i, and print those out. So we just run it. Actually, let's just so you should just print one, three, five, and seven. One, three, five, and seven as it loops through the sequence. Okay, so the other um, example here, I'll change this to just a, a string. A string is also a sequence, so it, you can loop through it. Uh, let's say hello. And then here, I mean, this is just a variable. I can say k, I can say ch, but you need to change this to match this. So it's the first time it's going to assign h to this, and then it's going to print h, e, and then l, and so on. So we'll go ahead and print that. And as you can see, it printed h, e, l, l, o exclamation now the third uh, variation is where you have you can specify like a given number of times you want to loop through a block of code so you can say you say for k you know, now you, here you use the range command which allows you to specify how many times you want to loop so let's say you want to loop uh, four times and then you want to do say you want to print uh, testing 
the loop, the whole loop. So all this is gonna do is, the first time it's gonna assign, so within this range you have zero, one, two, and three. So four times, it's gonna go, the first time it's gonna uh, use the zero position, one, two, and three position. So four times it's gonna print the same string right here. So when it does the loop, it should give us three, of the, uh, four of those. So here they are. There is a statement you can add within your for loops. Let's say there is a, a condition within a for loop that you want to trigger the, the loop so that it can break out of the loop and not finish the loop. Um, I'll, I'll show an example of using, so you will need to use like a break statement to jump out of a loop before it completes. So we'll do a different example here. I'll create a list here. Answers. I'll say A, B, C, and D. And then we say for answers, for answer in answers, if answer, If any of if any of these answers here is an empty string or an empty answer, we want to print uh, no answer was provided, and then you want to break. So if no answer was provided within the answers, you want to break out of the loop completely and go to the next statement outside the loop the for loop. Otherwise, if the answer is not empty, you want to print that answer. So in this case, when it breaks out of this loop, it will print something like uh, uh, the loop is done. So in this case, we don't have any empty answers. It should go through the loop and, and print out all these answers. So when we run the code here, It shouldn't break out of it. So this is never going to be true. It's going to print all the answers. So this is all the answers. However, if this one was empty, and then we run it, it should print just the two, and then print no answer and break out of the loop, and it's not going to print D. So it's just printing A, B, then no answer then the loop is done it jumps it jumps out of the loop without finishing it didn't print d okay so another variation of this will be continue so instead of it breaking out completely we can have it do something if it finds the no answer here we can say no answer but we can continue and print the rest of uh, whatever that's on that sequence so here we can say continue so if this statement here is true, there's not there's a blank answer or an empty string. You want to continue back, go back to the loop, the beginning of the loop, and continue. So which will result in this D being printed. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run that and see what we get this time. So as you can see here, we have A, B. Then it says no answer was provided for C, then D. Okay, so last year here, we'll go over the, briefly over the while loop. So the for loop, you normally use it when you, you know you have a specific number of loops, you know in advance how many times you're going to loop. And, and uh, the while loop is often used when you're not sure how many times you're going to loop. So I'll do a quick example of the while loop. Uh, we'll start with a variable here. We'll give it a value of one, and then we'll say while number this number. While this number here is less than seven, or uh, we can say when it's less than or equal to seven or uh, five. If this statement is true, whenever this statement right now is true, one is less than or equal to five. We want to do something. Uh, we say print and print the number. And multiply by itself. 
Now, if we don't increment this number, this statement was, is always going to be true, and this will just keep, you know, looping. It, it's going to keep printing with this over and over again. So you need to provide a mechanism, a statement that's going to increment this number such that this statement is going to end up being false. Otherwise, it's just going to remain true and it's just going to keep looping and looping and looping until they, you know, there's an error or the, uh, the program crashes. So you have to increment that number here by one. So number plus equals to one. That increments it so you don't have an infinite loop. Now if we run it, they should just do uh, one, two, three, and four, five multiplied by themselves. So one, four, nine, 16, and 25. So let's just see what happens if we don't have this increment so that it's always true. We'll see what it does here. So as you can see, it just keeps going and going. It just keeps going. It doesn't even go to the next number. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope this information has been useful. I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks. Bye.